Здравствуйте! Мы здесь с американским президентом в Санкт-Петербурге для встречи G20. Добро пожаловать to West Wing Week! Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and points east. This week, the president represented the United States at the G20 summit in St. Petersburg, Russia. He addressed the nation on the ongoing crisis in Syria and marked the 12th anniversary of September 11th at the Pentagon, while the vice president highlighted infrastructure improvements and the first lady traveled to Watertown, Wisconsin to ask Americans to drink more water. Then September 6th to September 12th, or my fellow Americans. The president started off this West Wing week at his seventh G20 meeting, this one being held in St. Petersburg where leaders of the world's largest economies converged and consulted on their shared interest in growth, job creation, and financial stability. The president met separately for bilateral meetings with President Xi of China and President Hollande of France. Then he made his way to Briefing Hall 5.3 to hold a news conference and take questions from journalists and discuss the work of this year's summit. There are times where uh, we have to make hard choices if we're going to stand up for the things that we care about. Then, before leaving Russia, the president sat down for a roundtable with an august group of community organizers who are advocates for civil rights and democracy in their home country. Good government is making sure that we're creating a space for civil society to function effectively. Meanwhile, eight time zones away in Washington, D.C., school was back in session. The First Lady joined athletes Shaquille O'Neal, Allison Felix, and Dominique Dawes to highlight the Let's Move Active Schools program which incorporates physical activity before, during, and after school for at least 60 minutes a day. On Monday, the Vice President traveled to the Port of Baltimore to highlight a $10 million Tiger Grant to expand the port and deepen a key navigation channel. Infrastructure improvements like this are all a part of the President's better bargain for the middle class, and this one takes advantage of the new larger container ships that will soon be passing through the Panama Canal that will ultimately improve productivity, increase cargo storage capacity, and create jobs for American workers. Manufacturing is coming back to the United States. Back in the Blue Room, the president sat down for interviews with anchors from six television networks, NBC, CNN, CBS, Fox, ABC, and PBS. On Tuesday, the president traveled to the Capitol to meet with the Senate Democratic Caucus and the Senate Republican Conference. Then, that evening, at precisely 9.01 and 30 seconds, the president went on the air to address the nation about the debate that's been taking place in Congress and across the country about Syria, why it matters, and where we go from here. America's not the world's policeman. Terrible things happen across the globe, and it is beyond our means to right every wrong. But when, with modest effort and risk, we can stop children from being gassed to death and thereby make our own children safer over the long run, I believe we should act. On Wednesday, the President, the Vice President, the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, and White House staff observed a moment of silence on the South Lawn to mark the 12th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Then, the President attended a September 11th observance ceremony at the Pentagon Memorial. They left this earth. It slipped from our grasp, but it was written, what the heart has once owned and had, it shall never lose. The president then traveled to the Northeast D.C. headquarters of Food and Friends, which provides meals to people with serious illnesses. He volunteered to help bag some groceries and commemorated the September 11th National Day of Service and Remembrance. I have apples and bread. I can handle it. Meanwhile, the First Lady traveled to Fort Belvoir, where she visited with military families at the new USO Warrior and Family Center, the largest center in USO history that supports wounded, ill, and injured troops, as well as their families. She also visited Intrepid Spirit One, the first of nine satellite centers of the National Intrepid Center of Excellence, which provides care to service members and veterans who suffer from TBI, PTSD, and other related conditions. That evening at the Naval Observatory, the Vice President and Dr. Biden hosted a barbecue to honor wounded warriors and their families. On Thursday, the President convened a cabinet meeting to receive an update on the second term domestic policy agenda, including issues such as immigration reform, the Affordable Care Act, and his climate action plan. Meanwhile, the First Lady traveled to Watertown, Wisconsin, where she launched a new nationwide effort to encourage Americans to drink more water. She's bringing together leaders from industry, entertainment, media, and government around the simple message that water is one of the best and easiest choices every one of us can make every day. To find out more information on any of these topics, including Drink Up, 
or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing week. Could we get one without the hairnet? I'm a whiner. I know. You'll send us the one with the hair. <laughs> Thank you.